How's it going? This is Tim from G.I. Joe Immortal and today we're going to take a look at some of my early G.I. Joes from 64 up to the 70s and uh, there's been a lot of confusion that I see on eBay on what people are selling and I'd just like to inform everybody about the different types of G.I. Joe that were produced. This is the first issue of G.I. Joe and you can see he looks like he has mascara around his eyes. There was some extra paint around the eyes to give him more accentuation. I do have one of these. Unfortunately I have them put away in the boxes and I just want everybody to know that this is what they call a mascara type G.I. Joe. They're uh, the first issues. They were blonde haired, brown eyes, and they had like that mascara going around the eyes. And uh, that is the first issue. Now the second issue is this guy here. He's brown haired. They got hard heads. They're hard. They're not soft. You don't press them in. Now, see how he just got kind of a translucent looking face like that? Okay, I can show you an example. Right here. This is the second issue, G.I. Joe, right there. He has the hard head. You can't press it in. That's the second issue, brown haired figure. And he's got kind of like a translucent look to his face. That is the second issue. Now we move on to the third issue, which is a hard-headed red hair guy. I don't have a loose example here right now. Like I said, I have them boxed, and I'm not going to bring those out. Um, I'll show you an example of box here. Here's a box for an action sailor. And the boxes are usually worth more than the figures. You can usually get some of the boxes can go from up to $200 to $300 a piece, and even more depending on condition. But the third issue, G.I. Joe, was a red-haired, hard-headed figure, okay? And then the fourth is going to be a black-haired, hard-headed figure, like that. And I do have an example. And he will have... The brown eyes. Or do I have an example? Um, as a matter of fact, I don't have, and I'm sorry, I don't have one out here. But anyways, he would have a hard head and the brown eyes and the black hair. Now, this one is your fifth version of the G.I. Joe head put out in 6465 right there he has brown eyes and he still will have a hard head that's him there and he has a hard head as you can see that's the fifth version Sixth version would be put out in 1966. Looks like that. It's black hair, blue eyes, hard head. I can show you an example. Right here. Hard head, can't squeeze it in. Blue eyes, black hair. Now, as they got into 67, which I do have this version right here exactly, this is the seventh version of the G.I. Joe head, and these got softer. These are the ones that got soft. And here he is right here, and as you notice, they have a soft head. That's when they transformed. 
and that's the sixth version. I have several, you know, other examples of the G.I. Joe heads, but that's pretty much it until they got into the... So most of the figures you get are either going to be the hard heads from 65 and 66 to the soft heads from 67. The mascara ones are not easy to find. And I see a lot of these guys putting on there, or you may even see some, some paint around the eyes. you got to be careful because... Guys will be trying to trick you into buying a first edition soldier, and that's not the case. But then we get into the adventure team guys. That's the head with the, the beard, the bearded figures. I have this one and that one. This is actually the uh, sea adventurer, I believe, and this is the air adventurer. And then you have the man of action, which is like that. And you can get other versions of the, the hair like that. This is the 1970 Team African American Adventure Head with black lifelike hair. Now, you can find these guys still, but you got to be really careful because the bodies get very cracked and falling apart. And a lot of times they don't show you the bodies and be leery of that because if you buy one and you don't see the body, more than likely he is all cracked up and ready to fall apart. So be careful of that. Make sure you see the whole body of the figure before you get it because a lot of the ball joints will just disintegrate over time. And it's hard to find a very good figure like that. This is the talking version. And then you have your Mike Powers head right there. And then you get into the Eagle Eyed, which these guys are pretty rare to find because they came on around 1976 when G.I. Joe was kind of dying out. And, uh, and there's the lifelike hair Eagle Eyed figure. These guys cost a premium. If you see some, try and pick them up if you can. They're really tough to find. Then this guy I really didn't care for was the Bullet Man head. I just thought it was too cartoony, and I didn't really care for it, so I never really got into him. And then the Intruders, I didn't care for at all. Uh, I was more into the Adventure Team and the regular military styles. Now we get into some of these heat stamps. Now, how you can tell uh, what issue soldier. Now, the first ones, the very first issues, had a heat stamp on the back. Right here now you can barely see it if you can uh, it, you just can't even hardly see it but that's the first of some of the first issue ones and then you got into a heat stamp that was up there on the shoulder that says 1964 Hasbro USA and then you got into your regular stamps which a lot of us got from 64 to 65 uh, we're talking about in the 60s, in the mid-60s, out of the two-piece mold. It reads, G.I. Joe TM Copyright 64 by Hasbro R, patent pending, made in USA. And then the most common ones are these here. Is the 66 and 67 to 69s. Now the 66 will say... Copyright 64 by Hasbro, patent pending, made in USA. Now the ones from 67 to 69, which was 68 was actually the end of the military type figures, was G.I. Joe, our copyright 1964 by Hasbro, patent number, and it would have the number there, made in USA. Now these are quite common. You see them, they got the stamp going across the buttocks there like that and those are pretty common most of these you those figures you can get bare bones for 20 bucks 20 to 30 bucks and that's uh, a nude figure there's the 67 where you had a patent was across the back as you can see it says patent pending and then 
on the butt axle is marked G.I. Joe Copyright 64 by Hasbro, patent number made in USA. Those are the 67 ones. And those usually came with the European soldiers. Now the Canadian markings had G.I. Joe Reg TM RD 64 Hassenfield Brothers Incorporated patented 1966 made in Canada. That's the Canada figures. And then we got into these adventure teams from 75. They were right across the back. Hasbro patent pending, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And then one with a bit more on the other side. And those were in 76, I believe. Yes. And that was it. So be careful on these guys saying, here's a first issue G.I. Joe, and they want a couple hundred dollars for a head. And it doesn't look like that then they're full of beans. Or if it does look like that, be careful. Make sure you get a close-up shot of that head to look for that mascara on the side. Or, you know, it's a lot of times it could rub off or something like that, as you can see with some of my figures did. But make sure that it was there. And uh, now we'll uh, might as well take a look at a few of my figures that I have right now. Um... This is my Marine Sergeant here. Let me get him set up here with his helmet. He's got his full uh, Marine uniform. That is an original uniform from 64, 65. It says Hasbro Hong Kong on the tags. I'm not going to open them up right now, but and he's got the, uh, usually the Marines had the brown boots, but you know, I change these guys out on whatever I think I, I like them to be, but that's one of my earliest figures there. And he's a hard head. And then I have this, my Snow Trooper, original, with the original snow uniform, goggles, everything. The 10th Mountain Insignia, which I thought was really cool. I do have a hel helmet with the insignia, but I don't have it out here right now. Uh, I'm always afraid to get messing up that insignia. But as you can see, it's got the white, white backpack. That pickaxe is more newer one, but I really liked it. And then you got the white cartridge belt with the white overcoat, white pants, and the white boots. And that's the 10th Mountain Arctic Soldier there. And that's a pretty nice figure there. Then I've got my lieutenant, or no, actually this is my medic. Here's another hard head. It's from like 66, 67. Blue eyes, really nice uniform. Got the brown plastic boots. My rubberized boots I kind of put away. I don't, I didn't, I'm always afraid to uh, rip them when I'm putting them on the figures and things like that so i put them away a lot of them are on my original figures that are in the boxes that i have stored away but there's another black haired figure and here's my uh, my sixth edition figure soft head and he is in just excellent shape i do have the original box for him and everything too but it's all original uniform this is a japan uniform because that was made in around 67. But uh, really nice figure. No cracks, no, no, no cracks in the knees, nothing. He's just in mint shape. And then uh, I have my Action Sailor. Action Sailor here. Another kind of a... Got that translucent head there. Hard head figure. Action Sailor, all original uniform with the dungarees, the half boots, uh, white cartridge belt. I got a white M1 with the binoculars there. These are just some of my figures I'm going to share with you. Now we'll get into the man of action here. One of them, I just received this guy. And the only reason I got it was because I like that parka. Parka is actually a very rare came in a very rare Arctic survival set. 
I think it was put out in 66 or 67, and I had the only one I've ever seen it came up for sale, and I bought it just for the parka. Didn't really care much about the, as you can see, his face needs some cleaning, but that is your uh, action, man of action with the lifelike hair before the beards there. And we'll get into a sea adventurer who's actually in one of the racing outfits or one of the ad adventure team sets, but you can see the dog tag, adventure team dog tag, really nice uh, uniform there, but that is your air adventurer there with the blonde hair. And then I happen to have a white tiger hunt figure with the red hair right there with the, the white tiger hunt outfit on. Got a little bit of a bow in the uh, tranquilizer gun, but it looks pretty cool, but really nice figure. And the adventure team insignia there. And then let's we'll see here, we got my secret mission to Spy Island figure here, which you may have seen in one of my earlier videos. That's him there. Really excellent shape figure from 1970 with the black dungarees, the half boots, and the black sweater. The camouflage, the camouflage radio with the red Adventure Team binoculars and the rubberized hat. Just a couple more to go here. Here's my lieutenant. He was in one of the, let me set this down for a second. And I'm going to set him up right here. And get his helmet on. I wanted to show you this helmet especially because I collect these helmets too. And they're not really G.I. Joe. Well, they're not G.I. Joe. But uh, there's the fatigue jacket there. Which is a really nice example from Hong Kong, but that helmet there is from Sergeant Stone, uh, kind of like a Johnny West type uh, action figure that had uh, Johnny West head on it, and only just a military guy. They called him Sergeant Stone. He came with a bunch of plastic equipment that worked really well with GI Joe, especially the helmets. And uh, but that's my lieutenant there with the field jacket. And I believe he's a soft head. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's a soft head figure. And then one more. If I can grab my... These are kind of out of reach. There's my Secret of the Mummy's Tomb. It's just a regular figure I put in the... Uh, the brown khakis with the pith helmet. This is an original 60s, 67 figure right there. But a really nice example of the khaki outfit. And that's some of my uh, G.I. Joe collection. And uh, I'm glad you had the opportunity to take a look at some of these with you. But I just wanted to get something straight on the heads. I see a lot of people getting burnt. And tell me, look at this first issue and this and that. And I come and look at it and they and I'm like, that's not a first issue. And what would you pay for that? And they ended up paying a lot of money for something that was not a first issue. So I just wanted to get that straight. I mean, look for these uh, kind of like uh, translucent type heads like that guy compared to this guy. See, that's an older figure. That's a soft head from like 67 to 69 or actually 68 they quit making them um, and that guy is more of your 66 67 the earlier ones are going to be these guys right here and some of the earlier guys there i don't have a first issue here that's going to be the mascara guys you can see the black around their eyes but most of the common ones are these guys right here are those 
and you can pay maybe $20 to $30 for one. I would not pay more than that unless they have their box with them. Then you're talking maybe two, three hundred dollars. Okay. All right. This is Tim from GI Joe Immortal. I hope that helped you out a little bit on your search, but, uh, just remember to be wary of, uh, I see a lot of guys out there trying to rip people off and it's just not cool. So I wanted to make sure that you guys knew what you were looking at. These are not first edition figures right there. Okay. Just to let you know, they're earlier than these guys. These guys are your later figures right there. The soft heads. Okay. These are the earlier guys, but they're mainly from 65 to 66. Okay. Well, thank you. And we'll see you again next time. This is Tim, G.I. Joe Immortal.